Welcome to Project Car Media, and in this video, I'm gonna be taking the BMW E36 over to Peak Innovation Motorsports to have the whole subframe taken out of the car so we can install the PowerFlex subframe bushing kit as well as the Condor Speed Shop subframe reinforcement plates. Uh, and then we're also gonna do a general inspection of the car underneath while it's up on the lift just to make sure that over the last year and a half, nothing major has gone wrong. Uh, and then when we get the car back, we're gonna do a little test drive just to see if we notice any difference. And there's a couple other little things that I need to finish up like removing the rear seat and I have a couple little things on the front of the car that we'll install at the very end of the video. So stick around because we've got a lot to get through and it's gonna be a super fun video. All right, we made it over to Peak Innovation Motorsports. So um, yeah, the car has been here for a few days. I dropped off a couple days ago. So now they got it up on the lift. So let's head downstairs and do an inspection underneath and just see what's going on. And then I'll show you guys the PowerFlex bushing kit that I've had laying around for quite a while. Here it is, car is up on the lift. Headlights are still looking pretty clear. And these are the new wheels I got, the Kose K1s with the Hankook RS3s and they look nice and meaty as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a look underneath and just make sure nothing major is going on. Uh, we're just gonna take a look under here, see what has changed over the last 12,000 miles and a year and a half. Everything's looking pretty good. Um, just the typical leaks, the power steering line is leaking as usual, but nothing crazy. Um, brakes and shocks look pretty good. Uh, oil pan is dry obviously i just changed the oil in this and everything's looking good i remember i had the oem driveline replaced and then the m3 differential as well and one thing i wanted to show you guys when we were looking through here is you can see one of the one of the axle bolts is just hanging out it's definitely coming out which is not good so i'm glad we got this up in the air and did an inspection uh, just that would have come out and that would not have been good but uh, besides that everything else is looking really good uh, there's a little bit of leakage on the e36 m3 differential but uh, that's easy to fix rear shocks are looking good still everything else is looking pretty good the subframe plates will help with the subframe breaking through the floor which is common in these after a long time so i'm really excited about that and uh, so i'll show you guys what that looks like with this whole subframe down and the plates welded in we'll check that out later but all right it is a couple days later and i'm back over at peak innovation motorsports they got the subframe down and uh, they're getting ready to put in the subframe bushing kit as well as the subframe reinforcement plates so uh, yeah let's head inside and check it out i want to see what the uh, bottom of the car looks like before they put the subframe back in just to make sure there's no cracks or anything crazy going on so all right they got the whole subframe out with the springs and it has they have all the bushings and the subframe reinforcement plates out ready to go in here are the old ones uh, he did have to destroy them a little bit to get out but they weren't they weren't very bad but like i said since i have the whole subframe out to do the plates i might as well do these uh, powerflex subframe bushing kit while you know while it's out because i had it laying around but um yeah the subframe looks pretty good uh, they cleaned it up for me and it no rust or anything like that everything looks pretty good um you know probably do some trailing arm bushings in the future but uh yeah these are where the subframe bushings will go right in these holes right here and i'll show you under the car here this is what it looks like with no subframe or anything it's pretty funny uh, but here's where they grind out down to bare metal so these are the actual subframe uh, reinforcement plates that's where they'll go and then this one over here is the uh, trailing arm so everything looks good there luckily there's no cracks or anything right here uh, that's like one of the worst things that can possibly happen is if um, your body cracks then this car is pretty much totaled so i wanted to get this done because i know i'll be racing it and uh yeah everything looks good it cleaned up really nice and uh the the subframe reinforcement plates are here and these are made by condor speed shop so i know a lot of you guys are probably aware of Condor Speed Shop. Yeah, one other thing I wanted to show you guys too is that I do have the EBC Yellow Stuff pads and like this is 13,000 miles and look, the rears have barely been used. So definitely gonna be able to keep those pads in there. And then here's a 
little shot of the uh, brand new drive line I had to pick up about 13,000 miles ago or so. They're all ready to get welded in and then they're gonna put the bushings into here and then uh, basically you have to throw the whole subframe back in with the new bushings and when these are all welded in they'll bolt right to those and then the whole rear end will be pretty much solid. Uh, there are some other things I could do like um, diff bushings. I could do those in the future or possibly like I said the trailing arm bushings but for now since I had these laying around that's what's going to go in and it's it is going to help a lot in the back so let's get this thing back in. I just paid the bill and picked up the car and now we are heading home and uh, just driving down the road it seems to drive really nice they ran into no issues when they were putting the subframe back in and all that I wanted to mention as well that uh, if you guys remember seeing the inspection that the you know the power steering line was leaking really bad so they were able to dry that all up clean it all up for me and put some new hose clamps on so now everything is nice and dry uh, they also put on a new serpentine belt because mine was really cracked and then they also uh, actually found what was rubbing in the rear passenger side of the car if you remember i mentioned that there was something rubbing uh, when i put these new wheels and tires on and it turns out because these wheels are a lot thinner the extended lug bolts that i had for the spacer were actually sticking through the hub like like almost an inch and they were rubbing on something in the hub i can't remember exactly what he said but yeah i i would have had no idea because all the wheels i've ever ran on this car have been oem bmw wheels so that was the cause of that so we had to take the spacers off in the rear and put in some stock length lug bolts at least we solved that problem uh, and while I was up on the lift, we were looking around uh, at everything else and we actually noticed that the tires that came with these Kose K1s are a lot older than I thought. Uh, I didn't even think to look at the date of the tires uh, because they look so good and they still get sticky when they're hot. Turns out they're like 12 years old. Uh, if I'm reading the tire right, they're, they're, so they're very old tires, but I think they were kept inside and I don't think they were used very much because like I said, they still look good and they still get sticky. Typically, I would just say absolutely not. I'm gonna change out these tires and before I get on the track. But since uh, track is coming up really soon and these tires too, do still get kind of sticky, I'm gonna stick with them for this first track day. And if they are slipping and sliding, they're not getting sticky or or whatever the case is, then I'm gonna absolutely get some new tires for these wheels. And I have my eye on some Falcon RT660s. Uh, they make a 225-50-16, uh, which is just a little bit smaller. They'll look very similar, but they'll have much better traction because they're new and they're actually really sticky tires. I've heard lots of good things about them. So all in all we got a lot of things fixed over there and we found a couple things out about the car which is good and so now the car is pretty much ready to go to the track uh, one thing that i didn't do last video that i meant to do was remove the back seat as you can see it's still it's still in there uh, so we're going to remove that and then i actually picked up some really cheap plastic fog light covers uh, just to go in the fog light holes on the front bumper and then i also have the factory tow hook for the front and i'm going to screw that into the bumper as well uh, so that way you know if i something happens on track since this is the first track day in like two years for this car if something happens on track i'll have a tow hook in the front that they can tow me to the side but anyway let's get back to the house i'll show you guys how to remove the rear seat and I'll also uh, show you guys the fog light covers and the OEM tow hook, and we'll see how that looks in the front. Ooh, still sounds good, still pulls good. 
man, these M50 engines are just solid. I love it, you know, but it is a little bit slow compared to the GT350, so um, I don't know. I might see a supercharger in my future. I've got my eye on a couple different options. Let's get back to the garage. We made it back to the house, and I wanted to show you guys the, um, this is the factory tow hook that comes in all the BMW toolkits in the trunk. So we're gonna screw this into the front. I was thinking about getting an aftermarket one, but I couldn't really, I couldn't really find one that I liked. Uh, and then these are the cheapo plastic fog light covers. Uh, they should just clip right in. I, you know, I read a couple decent reviews, but as you can see, like I literally haven't touched these and they look all scratched up. So let's go ahead and put these in real quick and then we'll move to the back seat. Lucky for me, this whole impact strip right here is missing from who knows what. It was like that when I first bought it, which exposes where you screw in the tow hook. So this is perfect. All right, so I'm gonna screw it in here. Looks like that's how it's gonna sit. Uh, I'd like it to sit more like, like that, but it rattles and it's just a little bit too loose. So I guess it's gonna have to be like that. Um, well, actually, hold on. I could get it more like that. It's not completely flat, but um, yeah, looks pretty flat. Doesn't look too bad. Looks, you know, looks aftermarket, right? Yeah, I like that. Anyway, uh, I wanted to ask if anybody knew where to get these impact strips. When I look at FCP Euro and Beamer World and all those places, they say that they only they have these impact strips, but only for uh, a production date of September or newer in 93. This car was made in March of 93. So um, I don't know what the difference is here. So if anybody knows, go ahead and leave a comment down below. That would be much appreciated uh, because I don't see what the difference would be. And we're moving on to the fog light covers. So, um, I'm going to try to put it in just like a normal fog light would come out. Now, if you remember when I had the fog light in and you push the tab, it popped out this way uh, and then you pulled it out. So I'm going to try to put the tabs in this side first and then just push this in and hopefully they'll click. I don't, I don't imagine they'll fit perfectly here, but uh, we'll see. Um, okay, there's that side. And it's not really fitting very well. Let me, let me see if I can finagle it here real quick. All right, so I got this side in. What I had to do was use a flathead screwdriver on this side to kind of push the tabs in because they were actually hitting on the bumper. So the fitment's not the greatest, but all the tabs do fit into the respective holes and it seems pretty solid, like it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, I imagine if I hit a cone or something, it might pop out, but um, yeah, it looks, looks a little bit more race car with the tow hook and the fog light cover. Yeah, so you know, little things, little touches that make the car look a little bit better. Let's do the uh, driver's side. Okay, driver's side, same thing. I imagine I'm gonna have to use the flathead screwdriver to push these tabs in over here. So yeah, as you can, you can't really see, but they're, it's hitting on the bumper on this side. So what you have to do is, well, not that. Uh, let me let me put the camera down and see if I can uh, see if I can do this. Okay, there's the driver's side. That was easy. Again, I used the flathead screwdriver to push in the tabs on this side till they went into their holes and. Now we're all done, so uh, let's check out the front end now. <laughs> Looks pretty cool with the fog light covers and the tow hook uh, and with the headlights all cleaned up too. It looks awesome. Okay, so last thing to do is to get the rear seat out. Move into the back seat. This is a little DIY on how to remove the rear seat in the E36. Uh, obviously, I do not have my side panels on here, but this is just to remove the back seat and it's really, really easy. Uh, first thing you want to do is just basically grab the bottom of the seat and just lift up and it just pops up. You do it on the other side and the whole thing just pops up and then you kind of pull out and then yeah, you just kind of pull straight out, pop and, and once you get both sides popped up and pulled out, 
then the whole bottom pad is loose and you can take it out. So let's go ahead and do that. This is actually really nice. Set that, we'll set that right there. And now we're on to the back seat part of it. And for this, uh, you'll notice that there are a couple bolts for the seat belts, which we'll take off after we remove the rear seat pads. For the first step, what you're gonna need to do is basically pull on these to open them up. So there's that one. And you wanna probably take one pad or one back seat out at a time. So in order to get it out, basically what you want to do here is you can't really, it's kind of hard to see, but there are a couple like spring loaded um, things right here and you just want to push them back while lifting up on this side of the seat. And then on this side over here, there's, on this side over here, there's literally just like a dowel, like a, a little dowel that goes into this piece here and that just pulls out. So let's focus on getting uh, this spring loaded piece back so we can lift this pad out. What you do here is you just grab a flathead and you push this spring loaded thing back. So as you can see, it kind of moves. And when you push it back like that, you lift up on the back seat and then you pull it out from that side and the whole back piece comes out. So I pop that out and you can see that the seat is loose. And basically all we have to do is just pull it out of this hole over here. As you can see over here, there's just like a little pin that goes in a hole. You pull that out and the whole back piece comes out. We still have the seatbelt running through it. So if you lift it up, you can see that the seatbelt still runs down to this bolt right here, which is a 16 millimeter. So once you pull that bolt out, then you can pull the whole seat and the seatbelt out. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, there we go. The uh, seat belt bolt is out. So now we can take out this whole piece here. Um, and then we actually still have that pad over there that we'll need to take out next. And we'll repeat the whole thing for the other side. To take out this side pad right here, what you'll need to do is come down here and you're gonna wanna pull this out right there. So that kind of frees up that. And then up here, there's just like a cliff. So you just wanna pull out and now you got this pad free and we can move to do the other side. The other side will be the exact same way. So um, I'm not gonna show you guys that, but the rear seats are back out. Uh, they were in originally and then I took them out when I owned the car and then when I sold it to my neighbor, uh, he put rear seats back in. But since it's back in my garage, uh, it is again a race car. So the rear seats had to come out and here they are over here. I got the whole back piece out, the bottom piece, the side pieces. And I gotta say like, like these back pieces probably weigh, I wanna say like, it, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 pounds each. Uh, I, obviously I'm really bad at guessing weights based on my previous video, but I wanna say that like, I saved probably close to like 50 pounds uh, just by taking the rear seat out is my guess. So that is done. All right, guys, that is gonna be a wrap on this video. And man, did we get a lot of stuff done. You know, uh, taking the car over to Peak Innovation Motorsports, getting the subframe dropped, putting the bushings in, the reinforcement plate kit in, uh, fixing that axle bolt, fixing the serpentine belt, and then bringing it back here, taking the rear seat out, putting the fog light covers in, putting the tow hook in. Um, and this thing is ready to rock for its first track day in almost two years coming up in a couple weeks so really the only thing that i need to do now is just wash the car and whether i'll get to that before the first track day or not i don't know it doesn't really matter because the paint on this car is terrible anyway in the meantime uh, thank you so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed this video and i hope that you guys stay tuned for the next video because that is when i'm going to be taking it over to the track to uh, the SCCA track night in america event over at portland international raceway and you'll see get to see the car in action and I'll, I'll report back to you guys on how the car did 
We'll see if I end up sliding all over the place with these old tires or if they end up doing all right. Um, it's gonna be a gamble. I mean, who knows what will happen. It's the first track day of the year. That is why I put that front toe hook on. You never know. So don't forget to like and subscribe to follow along and we'll see you guys on the next video.